For a while, I've been thinking about, could I upgrade my network to 10 Gbit? Now, one of the biggest limitations is my apartment is wired for Cat5e, and Cat5e is not rated for 10 Gbit. In fact, it's only rated a gigabit up to 100 meters. But then I was talking to Ubiquiti and they agreed to sponsor me. Now this is the Enterprise XG24, which is a 10 Gbit switch. Now I would not typically buy something this expensive for a, a test, but given that they gave it to me free, I'm going to basically see can we get a 10 Gbit network over Cat5e. Now you might be thinking, hang on, if Cat5e is only rated for a gigabit, then how on earth are we going to get 10 Gbit? Now the answer requires me to put on my physics hat. Now the two main limitations of ethernet cables are their length and their frequency. And the reason behind this is something called crosstalk. Basically, whenever you pass charge through a wire, it generates an electromagnetic field around that wire. Now, electromagnetic fields work both ways. Current can create an electromagnetic field and an electromagnetic field can create current. And you probably most often see this with wireless charging. Now, basically the charge mat is an electromagnetic coil which creates an electromagnetic field. The phone sits inside that field and receives induction from the electromagnetic field. Now the problem is when this comes to ethernet, you have multiple wires running side by side. So when one wire creates an electromagnetic field, this field induces current in neighboring wires and leads to something called crosstalk. Now the longer the cable is, the more the signal is gonna degrade due to resistance. And the weaker the signal is, the harder it's going to be for the adapter to distinguish the difference between noise and actual intentional signal. So when we're running our cat 5 e cable at the frequencies required to push 10 G bit, it's basically going to degrade very, very fast the longer it gets. Now, since Cat5e is rated for a gigabit up to 100 meters, if our cables are far, far shorter than that, then we should be able to get much higher bandwidth. Now, I don't know if we'll be able to get the full 10 Gbit, but we should be able to get at least more than 2.5 gigabits. So what I'm gonna do is plug two computers directly into the switch via Cat5e, and then we're gonna see what kind of bandwidth we can push. And if that test is successful, then we're going to move the computers to the apartment wiring and we're going to see what kind of bandwidth we can get between the computer down here and the computer upstairs. And that is pretty much the longest length of cable we have in our apartment. So if that is successful, then basically our entire apartment network will be capable of sustaining 10 Gbit. In my first test, we were consistently peaking around 8.5 gigabits. But then as soon as I opened OBS to actually demonstrate that, it would drop to 7.4. And the idea that we were losing more than a gigabit just from opening OBS meant that this wasn't a cabling issue. I actually think I might have bottlenecked the CPU on the computer. Now, after talking to a friend on Twitter, he suggested I try and play with Jumbo Packet. Now, what Jumbo Packets allows you to do is have Ethernet frames that are larger than typical, which means the adapter has to send less packets and the sheer volume of packets needed to reach 10 Gbit was likely bottlenecking my computer. So by increasing the packet size, I can decrease the amount of processing needed and get higher speeds. After enabling jumbo packets, I was able to get 9.6 gigabits per second. So this is a really solid result and it's a lot better than I expected. I'm basically getting full 10 Gbit over Cat5e. So the 10 Gbit switch will be finding a nice new home in my network rack. And then we're gonna run the test again through the apartment wiring. We ended up peaking at 9.4 gigabits per second, which is what I'd actually expect over actual 10 Gbit cables. And the reason is there's a lot of overhead, basically the network hardware, the computer hardware and the operating system, especially with Windows, I would never expect to get the actual actual 10 Gbit. So I would say, yeah, this was a success. We are able to get 10 Gbit over our Cat5e. But I should caution that these cables are basically yanked through the wall. All kinds of damage can occur during installation. And assuming the installers do actually test the cable, they're gonna test them at their rated speed, which is one Gbit, not 10. So if there is any damage that would limit their capability at speeds greater than a Gbit, it's going to go unnoticed.